So my name is Charlotte Brockman, and I grew up in a small town in rural Idaho. I was raised mainly in the Methodist church, going every once in a while, um, and really didn't know God, I, I would say. I knew what the church was. I had an idea of what I was supposed to believe. Um, these people who were telling me that, you know, God had great things for me, but I never really knew what that meant. My aunt and uncle in Idaho, who um, my aunt and my dad were raised in the Catholic Church, and I think it was very similar for them. You know, they knew what they were supposed to do. They they knew, you know, what religion they were supposed to follow, but they didn't really have a relationship with God. Um, I got to learn a lot more about my aunt and my uncle's story um, when my uncle was diagnosed with cancer, ooh, like 2017, 2016, um, and it was bone cancer. So we, we knew um, what the outcome was going to be. There, there was no um, denying that. Palm Sunday 2020, um, my uncle passed away. And, you know, that was very hard for me. I was pretty close with him and he was a role model in my life. That's somebody I always looked up to. And after he passed away, I got to learn a lot more about his journey um, with God and his beliefs and um, where he was. And at the funeral, one of his closer friends kind of started to tell his story, the last three weeks of his life. And that God was very evidently present in all of those moments. I think that's what that was one of those like pivotal moments that in in the grief and a little bit of guilt, you know, I had been kind of wound up in my own world that, you know, there was a greater relationship out there for me. Something popped up. There was a group of women doing uh, a reading through Proverbs in January. And one of the things that they encouraged was to really pray, um, pick a word for the year, you know. <laughs> Um, so I did it. I, I, I prayed. Um, I really started to figure out what it looked like for me to develop a relationship with God, um, even maybe if I didn't know that's what I was doing at that time. And the word that I had chose, or the word that chose me, I think, was trust. And just trusting, trusting the process and trusting God and trusting where He was going to take me. And I think just like finding peace in God in those moments was huge. I, I mean, like, if nothing else in my, like, the development of my relationship with God, it, it has been the peace and the love. And just knowing that with Him, I have those things always. I think Mexico just kind of drove those things in more. Um, there was one night, it was like the middle of the week, Wednesday, and I was just like, I, I don't know. Everything just felt a little off, like a lot of emotions for me, like emotions are kind of hard. So, you know, and it was that whole night, I just went to prayer. It was, you know, the whole time, just a constant conversation with God, you know, help me, help me to know where I belong, help me to know why I'm here. And then <laughs> at church, you got up, Jason, and started talking and um, really just like, your message about not being alone and how every person has a purpose. And it was like, there it is. Like, thank you. Thank you, God. <laughs> Even in my daily routine, you know, when I wake up in the morning, like our room is really cold. It's really cold in our room <laughs> every morning. <laughs> so, and I am a person who does not like to get out of my warm blanket in the morning, but really following the convention, conviction you know, get up and do go through my daily routine, you know, eat my breakfast, um, read my Bible or do my daily devotion and then start start my day. Um, that's been one of the things that's probably helped me the most in the last three weeks, because I really don't think I would be where I am right now or be as successful as I'm, I am with, without that. One of the things that I wanted to work on this at the beginning of the summer, you know, I recognized there was room in my life to really show people God's love and that's one of the things that I work really hard at, I think, is being very, very intentional with my interactions with people too, because as many people as God has moved into my life, I feel like it's so, so important to just to further develop connections in, in every way um, and really then give credit to God in, in those ways that he's moved. So I've been told many, many times, you know, God is 
never late, but he's rarely early. So trust, trust the process. Um, but also moving into your relationship with God and really furthering that and strengthening that starts, starts with you. Um, you know, opening your Bible and just starting to read. And I think for me, that was a very intimidating thing. Like, uh, you know, I, I couldn't do that. I didn't know where to start. Start anywhere. It's all important. <laughs> really look for people who are have a relationship with God and don't be afraid to bring up the conversation. I think a lot of times it's really hard to, for me anyway, it was really hard to talk about God. It was one of those things that in my family, we didn't really talk about. It was very personal, you know, a lot of emotions, but those are important. Uh, those are, those are really important. Those like eight to 10 weeks where I was living with the Lashaways, not only was that like the first time that I had like a stable place where I could just be, um, but also it really was probably one of the first times in my life that I recognized what God's love looked like in a family hmm. and um, what God could do in a family. One of the biggest things from Mexico was just learning how God speaks through people, you know, and taking those messages and, you know, really opening my eyes to hear God's voice and the way that he works in life. Don't underestimate the power of prayer because uh, prayers, prayers change things. And it doesn't have to be fancy. It doesn't, you know, it doesn't have to even be out loud. I think it's more about the constant connection than those moments that we traditionally think about, you know, going to church or sitting down and reading our Bible or, you know, being in a intentional, like very, dedicated state of prayer, I would say. Those are all important, but don't underestimate that constant conversation either.